Hello and welcome back to Always Do Auto Reviews. Here I do have this 2021 Mercedes Benz GLC 300, and today is not going to be a conventional review because I have already done a full in depth review on the 2021 GLC 300. It was finished in selenite gray and was almost fully loaded. I have that video linked in the description. There should be a pop up banner somewhere in that general direction, which you can click on if you do want a full in depth review. This review today, based on the title of the video, is going to be what I like and what I dislike about this specific vehicle and the GLC as a whole. And without further ado, let's break this vehicle down and complete a comparison. Now naturally, like all of my other reviews, I believe that it is best to start on the exterior, work my way around, and then get into the interior. But let's start with the front end and what I like. I do like the way that this whole front fascia is designed. I like that most of the vents are functional. I also like that the intercooler is somewhat hidden behind this nice and stated winged grille. I also really like the way these headlights function. These do have the automatic high beam assists from the factory, which are always great. And the DRLs do look very good as well. I also really like the ride height on the front end. Most people say that this looks bad. But considering functionality, if you are a new driver and have to park in front of a curb, you shouldn't be worried about scratching your bumper because you're just gonna hit the tires. The curb will clear under this front bumper. And I say that's a win. Same thing for the rear as well. Now the things that I don't like are these fake vents on the side and really these chrome inserts within the grills. I think they should just be black, but you can get the AMG night package. If you do get the AMG appearance package, this vehicle does not have that. Moving on to the engine bay, I'd say there is a lot to like over here. This vehicle does have a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder engine, which most people actually do not like because well, it's a four cylinder, but I'd say it's actually quite impressive. It does produce 255 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque, which is impressive in the segment. And considering that it's a four cylinder, which does get the vehicle to 60 miles an hour in just 6.1 seconds, I'd say it's a win. The engine bay is actually very well done and it doesn't look too bad. The engine cover is boring, but now I'm just being picky. There is really nothing wrong with this engine bay. Now, if you do have lots of money to spend, you can get a GLC 63S, which uses the four liter twin turbo V8. And that car is absolutely mental, but that's not this. So overall for a four cylinder in this GLC 300, I do quite like it. Wheel and tire setup from the factory is actually really good. I do like the way these upgraded 18 inch wheels do look and they also provide a very nice negative offset, which you do know I am a fan of if you have been following the channel for a while. These are wrapped in Pirelli Scorpion Verde tires. These are all seasons. They do stick very well, especially in this Seattle summer weather. The disc brakes on the vehicle also do function very good. So I'd say it's all a win for these wheels. A feature that I'm not really a fan of on any vehicle really has always been illuminated entry. It's a bit tacky and flamboyant. And it also was just, look at me, I have a Mercedes. Even though it's a base model GLC 300, it still has that Mercedes emblem. And I think that this is a bit too tacky for my taste. Some people absolutely love it though. Mirrors on the vehicle do appear to be a bit small while driving, but that makes up for it when they do fold in when you lock the vehicle. Oh yeah, and then this has keyless go as well, which is always great, nice and helpful. Works like a charm every time. Overall side silhouette on the vehicle is very good, no complaints here. This is classy without being bland, and that's what you'd like in a vehicle like this. This is the middle ground SUV which Mercedes-Benz offers, and considering that, this does look very good. And the roof, you can actually get roof rails from Mercedes-Benz. They will cost you a bit extra, but if you are going to be throwing things on top of the vehicle, it is a must. Let's move on to the back. Now in my previous review of the GLC 300, I did say I do really like the rear end on the GLC and that still stands today. I do like the way this looks and I also love that there is no annoying chrome piece on here that does come in some models. Now the lights are great, the badging is great, the overall proportions are amazing, the roof spoiler isn't really nice, you have the brake light and reflector over there. The only issue really is the fake exhaust and this plastic diffuser, which looks quite ugly, but it does have the parking sensors, which are probably the most helpful feature on the overall vehicle. Now, besides that fake exhaust and this diffuser, when you do open the trunk, 
opens nicely. I do love how big this rear tailgate is. And I also love that you can flip the rear seats down with the push of a button. But that also leads into something I don't like because you can't put the seats back up with the same button. Now again, more things in the rear that I like. This tonneau cover blocks everything from view. Nice and simple to use. It also works great, it looks great as well. You do have some storage areas, which is always great. And there is a mobility kit underneath this piece right here. This vehicle does not have it because this is a loaner vehicle from Mercedes-Benz of Seattle. But usually there are things in here. If you do wanna see what's in here, I have that in my GLC 300 review. We'll get into the interior and I'll show you what I like about it. Sitting in the front seat, the first thing I dislike about this interior is how cheap this regular base steering wheel feels. The leather just doesn't feel like leather, it feels like cardboards. And these panel shifters are kind of flimsy. The gloss on the hand controls are nice, except the hand controls do get very difficult to use while you are driving. It's really a chore to use, especially with this really small screen. The screen is actually smaller than my phone screen. And that says a lot about the base display in a GLC 300. You do have your tachometer on the left, but it just doesn't compare to what the GLE or the GLS or even the GLB are like. And the 10.8 inch display on the center of the screen really isn't that good either. The MBUX system does work very well. It is one of the best infotainment systems in my opinion. But the thing is it doesn't have navigation from a base. And that's something that you'd expect in a luxury car, which does cost almost $50,000. This vehicle has a base price near $46,000. And that's what's bothering me. Because for a base vehicle, that is way too high of a price. Once you do option it up, I do like that the price justifies the vehicle you're getting. The previous GLC I reviewed did have a lot of options and that was around $48,000 and for $48,000 a almost fully loaded GLC does sound very good and that's why I said the price was good on that vehicle but this is a base vehicle so $46,000 really just doesn't justify it I'd size up the class and you could actually buy a nice Tahoe that have a 6.2 liter V8 obviously those vehicles have different uses this is a small size crossover but when you're looking at what your money can get you there's a lot out there the door trim does look very good with this aluminum finish. I like the amount of seat controls. You also have your lumbar support over here. You have the trunk opening button with the large cubby. The black wood on the center does look very good. It's finished very well. You do have the nice trackpad, which I do like. You also have your drive mode select system and all of your other buttons. There is not a single blank switch in this vehicle. And I absolutely love that because blank switches do bother me quite a bit. I also like these vents because when you put them back into their center position, they do make a nice crisp sound, which I can show you. Very nice. Let's get back to the outside. Now in this video, I did include a lot of dislikes, but I'd say the likes outweigh the dislikes. And this is overall a very quality made vehicle. Overall, I do like the GLC 300 still, and I'd say it's a good buy as long as you spec it out properly, like I've said before. Thank you all for watching. That is all for today. And remember to keep on driving.